Hey, welcome to Footbreak Diaries Quickie. We're doing this vlog style, bro. Vlog style. Youngsters. Gangsters. Like gangsters. No, youngsters. Youngsters. Yeah. So, guess what happened? So, we got a call, me and Fonny. <clears throat> and this oak from Triumph, South Africa, found us. Bruce. Yeah. Bruce said, yeah. And Bruce said, would you guys like to come and ride a bike? A new one. And we said, okay. We're there. So, so we're flying from this place, which is the house of planes. You see, we're flying from here to a place called Nelspreis. Ah, to... Mbombela. Mm. Huh? Mm -mm. Krug and Pumalanga. Ah. So we're going there. Um, uh, not sure what to expect, but hey, that's what we do. We're riding a bike. So, to join us. Let's see what this thing is. Waiting at the gate, we had the opportunity to catch up on the real work we'd be missing over the next three days. Uh, we are we are launching this episode tonight, so I quickly have to. Oh, not tonight, tomorrow night. So, but this is the final edit, so now I have to quickly check it out, do the notes, and approve it or not. That's how the system works. We could probably have ridden the all-new Triumph Tiger 1200 bikes from Gauteng to the Lofeld venue quicker than flying there. But hey, we're not complaining. <music> Judging by the very experienced journalists in our group, we were just two average oaks coming along for a ride. So, even though we were a little overwhelmed by our VIP treatment and itching to get our hands on the new Triumph Tiger 1200, we played it cool. We enjoyed our in-flight catering and drinks and did our best to blend in. Like most other riders browsing riding videos and gossip on YouTube, we knew that Triumph was about to launch a new big capacity shaft-driven adventure bike. But being invited to the national press launch, well that was totally unexpected. Okay, so um, apparently this is how people do things in this part of the, the world. Uh, we are going to have a bit of a social or something. I'm not sure what. There's a, there's a big bed there. I think Fanny's sleeping on that side. I'll be sleeping on this side. And then uh, we're going to see what, what this bike is all about. <laughs> so this is it. It's pretty, ne? Sure. Like it, like it. So apparently, it's a 21 inch front wheel, it's a 1200 capacity, it's a drive shaft, and it's still a three cylinder but with an offset fire, so it sounds like a twin. Could it be the Holy Grail? We'll see. Bruce Allen. The CEO of Triumph South Africa welcomed us and shared his enthusiasm for the new 1200 Tiger and its technical prowess. Without him saying as much, we quickly realized that this Tiger was deliberately designed to take square aim at the current big bike shaft driven market leader. So we're on them tomorrow and it's raining. It's raining now and it's going to rain the whole night. It's going to be wet tomorrow and we are the first group doing off-road in red clay. So, excited. But let's go have a beer. <laughs> The next morning, it was all systems go. Peter gave us a quick briefing about the electronics of the new 1200 Tiger, regarding the heated grips and seats, keyless operation, the blind spot assist radar warning system, different preset riding modes, variable traction control and ABS, and on-the-fly adjustable suspension, to name but a few. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, what's the tires like? Luckily, it's proper tires. It's nobly. So this is the Explorer. You and in both models, the street orientated touring model, and then you have the adventure orientated model. So the Pro is not the fancy one. The Pro is the first one, and then you get the Explorer, which has like radar sensors at the back and, and makes cappuccinos, and sometimes waxes your chummy. That's, that's the fancy one, the Explorer. We headed out into the wet, low felt morning to find a somewhat rideable red clay track somewhere in a somewhat dry plantation. A break in the clouds. Could it be? Are we going to have a dry day? Well, not five minutes later, we found our answer. We were going to be riding through sporadic foggy clumps and gentle rain for the entire day. So the call was made to head in the direction of Mashishin. This gave us the opportunity to first get acquainted with the spoke wheeled rally models, equipped with a quick shifter that comes as standard and 150 horses heaving forward at the very moment you twist the bike's ear. Fani really enjoyed the speed control. Near Sodwala Caves, the rain slightly lifted and we found some almost dry gravel. We somewhat misguidedly started riding the 1200 Tigers the same way we ride our own adventure bikes, sliding, jumping and popping the odd power wheelie. The semi-active suspension was trying its best to predict the impact, but we bottomed the bike out on a couple of jumps, prompting a quick pit stop to chat about settings and preload adjustments. This is already a very tall bike, even before the preload starts lifting the back end. We dropped our seats to the lower setting for today, leaving both our rally models with 875 mils seat height. After some deliberation and fiddling with the suspension settings, we adjusted the comfort level of the damping, smoothing out the ruts and hoops slightly. The 21-inch front wheel adds to the level of confidence, inviting you to drop it into a turn and lean on it through the loose gravel without the fear of being bucked aside. So, um, a couple of k's ridden in anger. The suspension still bottoms out. But I guess you're not supposed to jump it. I must admit, uh, it, it, if you... If you you adjust the suspension through the strongest setting and I feel like it's so much shaking, you know how it feels, especially technical rider fatigue. Most of it comes through the handlebars, so you have to set it soft. But that being said, it's a, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy big bike, it's not a plastic. It's going to do some of the things great, but not brilliantly. That's adventure biking. We swap bikes to get a feel for both models. Fani took the Rally Pro and I jumped on the Rally Explorer with its characteristic blind spot warning lights mounted on the bottom of the rear view mirrors and its bigger 30 litre fuel tank that should, with normal everyday use, give you a realistic fuel range of almost 650 kilometres per fill. That's, of course, if you ride it like a normal human being. Bottle water! Uh -huh. Funny! And you know it is in there. Just! Drink you! Yeah, superstar! So tell us, how was that, Pierre? That was nice, that was nice. It is a heavy bike. It's a 1200. Josh often say heavy bike. What's the difference between the Explorer and the Pro? The, uh, the Pro is a much easier bike to ride for me. I don't know, maybe it's... I've asked a couple of and I thought, is it just a mental thing? And I said, no, it's, it's as if the Pro is a little more nimble for the footpeg style of riding. Remember, riding style counts for a lot. Here. But our specific style of riding on gravel, the Pro is the one. It's not the expensive Explorer. Uh, 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 stick to the Pro. If you want to spend lots of money, Put some extras on it, but 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 personally, I'd get the pro.
With the gravel part of the day done, we headed back through Mushy Sheen, riding up towards Long Tom Pass and our lunch stop at Hippo Hollow near Hazy View. At the top of the pass, we took a quick side route to a viewpoint that very few people know. Atop the ridge, Peter took us to some old Anglo-Boer War fortifications, built on the side slope of the mountain. From this commanding position, observers tracked enemy troop movements, and snipers could pick off unsuspecting targets making their way up the valley in the direction of Leidenberg. We dropped down Long Tom Pass towards Sabi into dense fog. Visibility was down to a couple of meters, drastically decreasing the speed of our damp descent. Sorry, come and try the, the you've got the rally pro now, but now try try the, the explorer because it's got heated seats. It's like it. My all is relaxing. So I'm, I'm constantly worrying, did I sh my pants? Or am I just relaxing? It's something totally new! <laughs> the fog cleared by the time we reached Sabi, but the road down the infamous 22 towards Hazy View was still wet. We couldn't give it beans with our knobbly tires in the wet, so we just settled down and enjoyed the ride, slowly snaking to the lunch stop. Funny, speak to me. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. We had all the weather conditions that we could have had, and we also had uh, all the different um, terrains. This all morning. the terrain we could have had. Yeah. Tell me about the drive shaft. Are you happy with the drive shaft? Yeah. Can you feel a difference? Is there more immediate power on the rear wheel? It didn't bother me at all. The power delivery was smooth throughout. Very smooth, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and constant and, uh, throughout the power band from the bottom to the top. So, and there's a host so, of electronics, a hell of a lot of electronics, and it works. It all works. Traction control. Saved your ass like five Traction times. Traction control and the rain mode this morning and this afternoon when we came down Long Tom Pass. The Perfect. rider safety Beautiful. stuff is flipping very impressive. Beautiful. Very impressive. Beautiful. Yeah. So let's go have lunch. Let's go have lunch and then afterwards we'll do the tar thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so all the Footpack fans, this is something totally different. You will have no reference point. We are going to do some tar road riding now. So, suck it up, Cupcake. There are beautiful views, apparently. And they say it's very nice and relaxing. So we are going to do tar road riding. Stop chuckling. We are doing tar road riding now. For this afternoon stint, we'll be riding the GT Pro and the GT Explorer versions of the 1200 Tiger. Both shot with more road bias rubber on cast alloy rims and a 19-inch front wheel. The rest of the specs are in a similar vein to their brothers in the rally class, with both GT versions sporting a slightly lower seat height than the gravel-orientated rallies. Straight off the bat, we are blown away at how easy it is to throw this bike into the twisties. The difference that the 19-inch front wheel makes is remarkable. The quick little smile on Farney's face says it all. We stop at Nachkantoor in Kaapse Whip for a warm cup of condensed milk coffee. Nachkantoor. The place is called Nachkantoor. Kaapse Whip. Kapsel whip? Ja, kapsel whip. Wat is het kap? Daar. Daar. Zo. 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 Zo.
Ja, ist recht so hoch. Was denke ich hier Eiskass? Danke für die Kuhle. Ja, sie passiert. Okay, okay, Nachkanzler, wo kommt Nachkanzler? Das war ein Koran, das bei mir gesetzt wurde, nicht an. Als ich Koran, die Augen in den Koran sehe, dann sage ich, ich habe bei mir gesetzt, nicht an, aber die Nachkanzler. Sehen? Komm, leer iets. Get an education, you bloody millennials. <laughs> okay, so, so, so. The GT Pro, uh, which is the, the first model, and then there's the GT Explorer. But this is the GT Pro, and with a smaller front wheel, it's a different bike. It's a total different bike. I mean, this is the closest I'll ever get to a tourer, you know what I mean? And it dips into turns. Interesting. It's not, it's not what Footpeg usually does, but it's an interesting bike. To think that it's the same model, but a total different bike. That's fascinating. Now for the last stretch through Mbombela's peak hour traffic and back towards Caster Bridge, our hotel just outside White River. Bruce, thank you so much for inviting us. It has been, it has been a, a, an absolute pleasure and a bit of a revelation. Yeah, look, the product is phenomenal. It's, it's hard. There are things that you will find that you might not like, or you might have preferred something that someone else did differently. But I think horses for 99 percent or 98 percent of this bike is exceptional. 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 You know, my ambition for the year is, is probably around about on an annual basis about 150 to 160 bikes a year, which gives us our little slice of that large capacity adventure segment. I have to give you bonus points for being uh, for for being here committing down to, to, to a project like this. Well, thing. listen, we're a small team, you know, we're not a big organization and uh, we all get, you know, stuck in and do what we need to do. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. And it's always good to spend time with good people. Well, I'll pay you five bucks later. <laughs> I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> but the, he was talking about me. You're talking about party. <laughs> the big question is, do they come in blue? Yes, and we don't have a blue one here because we've delivered all the blue ones. Thank you very much. It has been, yeah. it has been a privilege. Yeah. Thank you. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, funny. And funny as well. Thank funny. you, funny. Funny, enjoyed it. Near funny? Yeah. 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 So that's it. Everyone's packing up. That was a 1200. But for the riding we do, maybe their ideal weapon is the 900. Maybe. And I know this is not what this is about but I haven't tried the 900 ever so maybe me and Fonny should just go for a quick spin quick spin Fonny okay quick spin we quickly pop across the main road to a nearby gravel track through a blue gum plantation just to get a feel of the Tiger 900 Rally Pro you know comparing it to the 1200 that we've been riding and immediately the 50 kilogram weight loss and chain drive makes a huge difference. Enough to deliberately stick its nose into difficult places, just for the fun of it. Okay, so all things considered, I'll take this one, which is the 900. I know we're not we're here for the 1200, but for the type of riding Fanny and me, for the stuff we do, this is magic. This is magic, and this is also the reason in Triumph's own words, why you waited so long for the new 1200. Because of the 900. Everyone was expecting the quality of the 900, so they had a lot of work to do. To catch up with their own product, which was the 900 mid-range. The 1200 is amazing. If, you, if, you, if you're looking for a shaft drive bike, big capacity, I, my money, I dare say I might buy that one before I buy the other one. But, um, for our application, footbag, this is probably it, and look at it. Isn't it sexy? Look at it. I'll take it for a beer. And with that, we leave the Triumph Tiger 1200 launch with fond memories. Good bike, ample features, very good price. A big thanks to Bruce and the team at Triumph South Africa for inviting us.